I'm back. Get it? I'm, I'm back. <laughs> I miss you guys a whole lot, but I really love jamming to Mr. Quaker's rap. I hope you guys have been listening to it and using it to help you remember the lessons that we've My done already. Mr. Mr. Today Quaker. it's time for a brand new lesson. But before we get started, you know what it's time for? It's time to close our eyes and bow our heads. And it's time to do what? It's time to pray. Okay, let's pray. And when we pray, we're talking to God, okay? So you can speak to God while we pray together. Dear Jesus, we love you so much. Thank you so much for another beautiful day. Thank you that we are able to come together and watch Kids Church and make Kids Church and learn all about you and all about the Israelites and the Old Testament and all the amazing things you have done and you continue to do, Lord. Please bless us as we continue to learn more and more about you. In your name we pray and we all agree and say amen. So it's time to get into our narration. Our story for today has some exciting characters. We've got a man called Eli, a man called Samuel, and a lady called Hannah. And we introduce a new king. We're going to be reading from the book of Samuel. So we're going to be looking in our Bibles at 1 Samuel. Don't forget, when you're done with the lessons, look down below for the questions and have your discussion with a grown-up. Do I have a catchphrase? Let's get down to business to start this story. So. Towards the end of the times of the judges, there was a man named Eli. Eli was the priest of the temple and also the judge of the Israelites. Every day, Eli watched a lady called Hannah come to pray at the temple. Eli thought that she was drunk. But Hannah told Eli that she was sad because she had no children. Eli told Hannah that the Lord would remember her request. Sure enough, Hannah went on to give birth to a son whom she called Samuel. Hannah told her husband that as soon as Samuel was weaned, she would take him to the temple and he would grow up there learning the ways of the Lord. So from a young age, Samuel was cared for and taught in the temple by a priest named Eli. Eli had his own sons, but they did evil in the eyes of the Lord and they didn't take their work of looking after the temple seriously. Eli's sons did not obey the Lord's commands, but the young boy Samuel did. One night when Samuel was sleeping, he heard someone calling him. He got out of bed and he went to Eli and he asked Eli, what does he want? Eli said, I did not call you. So he told Samuel to go back to bed and keep sleeping. This happened three times. Finally, Eli realized that the Lord was calling Samuel. So he told Samuel to go back to bed. And when he heard the voice again, he should say, speak Lord, your servant is listening. The Lord did speak to Samuel. He told Samuel that Eli's sons would be killed and that he was not happy with Eli because he wasn't able to stop his sons from doing evil things. The next morning, 
Eli asked Samuel to tell him what the Lord had said. And even though Samuel was afraid, he told Eli everything that the Lord had said to him. Samuel continued to grow. And it came to pass that the Philistines came and they attacked the Israelites and they stole the Ark of the Covenant. Both of Eli's sons were killed on that day. When a survivor went to tell Eli what had happened, he fell backwards on a chair and Eli died. The Ark of the Covenant stayed with the Philistines for not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven months. And during this time, God inflicted lots of different kinds of sufferings on the Philistines. So eventually they begged to return the Ark of the Covenant back to the Israelites. After Samuel had grown, he became a priest, prophet, and the last judge. Samuel traveled around all the tribes teaching people to follow in the ways of the Lord. One day, a group of people came to him saying that they wanted Israel to have a king, just like the nations that were around Israel. This made Samuel very sad because he knew that if the Israelites had a king, then they would stop trusting in God. Samuel tried to tell the people that they would be sorry to have a king that would rule harshly over them. But the people did not listen and they insisted that Samuel anoint a king over Israel. Samuel prayed and God told him to choose a man named Saul and anoint him as king over the people of Israel. King Saul started his reign really well, but after some time, King Saul stopped listening to God and started to do things his own way. Samuel told Saul, and I'm going to read from the Bible, from the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. So Samuel said to Saul, but now, your kingdom will not last. The Lord has looked for a man after his own heart and chosen him ruler of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Hmm. I wonder who Samuel will anoint as a godly king. And I wonder what Saul is going to do when he finds out about the new king. Stay tuned.